Anila Ali, you are a face woman, a Muslim face woman leader, and you are the first time on my show. We have an audience from everywhere, especially from the GCC countries. I'm so glad to have you here on the Capital Show and in, at the University Club. You are a strong advocate for peace and unity into uh, Muslim communities. How do you think leaders can enhance and uh, move forward into inclusive dialogue when we have a world of very a very diverse world. Well, it's important for leaders, I think. First of all, I want to thank you <laughs> for right. having me. I'm so honored to be here. Um, I think it's very important for Muslim leaders and leaders across the world to promote the non-victimhood voice, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to Muslims. We want to be empowered. And if we continue, like 1.7 billion people, if we continue to be in a state of disempowerment, victimhood, we are never going to progress. Mm. Um, so I think that we need to promote those kind of values in our community. Leaders also have to have a genuine desire mm -hmm. to promote um, you know, those voices that unite people not those voices that are dividing people if they are promoting the populist voices because they think like politically it's expedient for them that's harmful for america that's harmful for our society so i feel that they need to do that in if they believe genuinely mm -hmm. in promoting peace and security for the country or wherever they're living mm -hmm. so non victimhood voices empowering voices if you certainly believe in peace and security for your mm -hmm. country or for your nation. What about cross-cultural uh, understanding, how your institution can be involved in uh, bridging these uh, cultures all together uh, in when we have an environment of polarization? You know, what I've seen in America, I was a first generation kind of immigrant parent and I came here with certain values that I grew up with in South Asia. And my daughter, who's like here, she lives here, she was brought up here, she would always question me, Mom, you know, you're not asking my brother to come in the kitchen and help you. I had to change that. Why? Because I wanted to make sure that there's no gap between my daughter's thinking and my thinking, mm -hmm. that I can teach her to be, you know, a good Muslim, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I actually encourage her to participate and not to have that gap in thinking. What happens to um, you know, young people growing up here, they see their parents come in with all those values that they come in. Um, they have, parents have to question, why did we come here? Are our values aligned with the community, the mm. democracy, mm. the country mm. that we're living mm -hmm. in, the constitution? Mm -hmm. Or are we here because we want to subvert the system or we want to continue to live in the dark ages that we came from? I personally came here for the freedoms that I enjoy, religious freedom, being able to be mm -hmm. a Muslim mm -hmm. woman and share what I believe. I have a diverse point of view. Am I included in the conversation? Yes, in America, even though you hear a lot of radical voices that are opposing what I'm thinking, but I'm still heard, I'm respected. Mm -hmm. So that gap displaces these young people. As parents, we how need we, to lessen that gap. How we can navigate these challenges and increasing the role of women in leadership? By including women and also making sure that women are just not token representatives. Mm -hmm. You know, um, these days it's like the cool thing to have women on board. And we see a lot of Muslim countries that have like 50% inclusion of women. But I ask you, Maria, let's ask them, are they token representatives or do they have the power of vetoing something? Mm. You know, it depends. We, it depends about the. Yes. The, the, yes. The, the, the I mean, I'd say we're much better, than, better off than we were ever. Yeah. See the challenge how Saudi Arabia now after yes, Vision yes, 2030. Yes. I, I mean, I absolutely love it. And you know, I lived in Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. and I always believed that Saudi Arabia being the leader of the Muslim world had to play a stronger role mm -hmm. in empowering women. Like the Prophet of Islam, peace be upon him, his wife was a CEO. But we're not seeing that in the narrative that's mm -hmm. the dominant mm -hmm. narrative about Islam. Mm -hmm. So yes, countries, leaders have a responsibility to promote women, mm -hmm. um, but let them also have a voice that is genuinely um, 
recognized, accepted, and they're not to they're not tokenized. Mm -hmm. How do you see the United Arab Emirates as the role model of tolerance and including women in power? Uh, there is lots of initiatives that uh, they are now even in diplomacy, foreign uh, policies that are uh, in, in the front. How do you say also in the humanitarian aids when we have wars in Lebanon, Gaza and elsewhere? First of all, I want to congratulate the UAE leadership. They have actually, you know, kept our faith in our religion that we can be a, a beautiful, moderate, modern, modern nation, Islamic nation. Um, hold the values dear to Islam, but at the same time respect human values, um, human rights, inclusion, diversity of religion, diversity of opinions. That's what you see in UAE. I think that they have done a great job of especially holding on to the Abraham Accords because they were about bringing people together. Mm -hmm. I always said, you know, if Muslims, Arabs and Israelis want to come together, who are we to stand in the way? Mm -hmm. You know, if it, uh, Indians and Pakistanis want to come together mm -hmm. and solve their conflict, why should anyone come in the way? Mm -hmm. So they have led the movement for um, a modern Muslim state. Mm -hmm, that's wonderful. How you give us some example of uh, initiative, interface initiatives that have positively impacted the world and impacted communities you're working with? Well, since 9-11, one of the things that I believe in and I, I kind of devoutly believe in is that you have to know your neighbors. You know, we say as Muslims that our values are the same as all the biblical Abrahamic values. But do we actually knock on our neighbor's door and ask? Because we have to get to our, know our neighbors. They're not going to know who we are. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have, um, you know, these, these preconceived ideas about us. And I say this to my Christian friends. Mm -hmm. I say this to my Jewish friends. I say it to everybody that the most important thing is having that dialogue, having that discourse. As an organization, we led the movement in actually opening up the doors of the synagogue, the mosque, and having interfaith conversations there. When Muslims were attacked and we felt really bad about you know the cartoons and Prophet Muhammad and we were hurt, our feelings mm -hmm. were hurt, but we understood that this is a country that values freedom of speech and so we have to understand it mm -hmm. and we have to stand with the interfaith community to to a kind of understand how to function in a democracy and to also navigate our feelings and see how the Jews and the Christians deal with it so if we are not going to have the, uh, the dialogue if you're not going to open up our homes and our hearts then we're not going to be able to survive in in a Western country mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. uh, the most important thing dialogue learn who your neighbor is and don't just listen to yes we have to be good to our neighbors the Quran always says uh, you know believing believing people and uh, men and believing women pious men pious women it doesn't say pious Muslims and pious uh, mm. men it's always talking about human beings if we say like in the Bible as well that we are the children of Adam are we believing in it, all of us? It's time we believe that we are one human family, that we are one human race. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we are not going to be able mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. come together and, and you know, build up the communities in America. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to uh, ask you a question related to this answer uh, concerning the, how the, the politics is ruining religion, how some nations are using religion like Iran. The, the regime in Iran is using it really to brainwash our heads and spread diversification and uh, disturb our world. What you can say in this regard? Well, I say that, uh, first of all, the Iranian regime, they, um, they want me to go away. They have a target on me. Why? Because I'm talking about real Islam. I'm talking about the truth. I'm talking about how Islam was sent for us to embrace Christians and Jews, mm -hmm. not to build our own empire based on death. That's what Iran is doing. And how can we as Muslims, no matter where we are, not condemn what they're doing to girls like Masa Amini? Um, you know, I say, what kind of a Sharia law? I, you must have seen the poll that came out. 39% uh, of Muslims want Sharia law in America. Do they want a Sharia law like Iran has? Or do they want a Sunni version of it like Afghanistan has? 
Should we stone the women or should we kill them for not covering? I mean, this is like, it's a, it's a non-issue for Muslims to say we condemn what's happening in Iran. We condemn what's happening in Afghanistan. But do we do that? No, in our hate, in our inability to listen to the other side, to understand what diversity is. Diversity is understanding all opinions. Mm -hmm. It's an inclusion of all opinions, not just a zero-sum game that if I'm not agreeing with you, Maria, you're not going to include me in the, mm -hmm. in the discussion or you're going to cancel me out or shut Lots me up. Lots of execution are happening in Iran. Absolutely. About this, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so, is there any danger that Iran can, is the regime in Iran can infiltrate our youth, our generation? Our, they are infiltrating through Hamas uh, slogans. Hezbollah, Muslim Brotherhood. They infiltrate. They have infiltrated. I'm not going to say they are infiltrating. They have, and you know, as a as a responsible Muslim leader, I wrote a paper on how to stop the radicalization of Muslims after 9/11, mm. and I said these are the things we can do. It's so how also, Sunnah and Shia now they are together. This is a question. Like, well, how they have a common enemy. They have Israel, and that's what I'm saying to Muslims. I'm saying this to Christians, and I'm saying, listen. The moment, mm. you know, they're done with Israel, mm -hmm. uh, Hamas being primarily Sunni will start fighting with Hezbollah because both of them want their own caliphates. Mm -hmm. One wants a Shia, radical, extremist, mullah version. The other one wants a Sunni Muslim brotherhood version. But right now, because they have infiltrated America and they're very happy to see what's happening, that's what exactly Hamas wanted, to see what's happening on the campuses and how our young people are so brainwashed that they're holding up flags for Hamas, but they don't know that Israel wasn't even ruling uh, Gaza, that it was Hamas that was holding its own Palestinians hostage, that they were using mm -hmm. and weaponizing the innocent mm -hmm. Palestinian mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. They are not even sincere to their own people. How can they be sincere to the Islam, to the, mm -hmm. the Islamic cause or the Palestinian cause? Mm -hmm. So no, uh, definitely um, Iran is an evil country, right? The evil regime, I would say, because Iranian people are a there majority are Jews of them. also Iranian yes, Jews who are yes, involved. Yes. How do you can, uh, in your words and in your uh, stance now, in your position, how you can enhance the Muslims community to get involved more in U.S. politics? Uh, what is the the uh, practical step can in individual Muslim in America to be a real patriot? Uh, what do you advise? Well, if you really want to get engaged in American politics, you need to learn to volunteer. You need to find out where your val values are, which party you align with. And I say even if you don't align with any parties, you can still go and um, volunteer at the election poll. You need to get engaged at the grassroots level. Um, you need to also educate yourself about this dem democracy. What are the values? If Somebody is teaching you that killing is a value, like Hamas is, you know, it's, it's, they are standing up for the Palestinians, then you need to check your value. You need to check your, that is not an American value. Mm -hmm. Then you are misguided. And it is your responsibility as a patriotic American to say, that is not our value, mm -hmm. right? You need to engage. You need to find out who you are. When you have engaged yourself and educated yourself, that's when you can be a real participant in American democracy. How we can fight extremist ideologies uh, into our society inside the U.S.? Inside the U.S., we need, to, we need to promote moderate, modern Muslim voices. We also cannot, um, for political e expediency, just say, yes, we're going to give these people a voice because it's the popular thing to do, because the, the media covers it. So I'm going to stand you know, with these people. I don't need to condemn them, even if they are calling killers, um, you know, activists. I think that is where the flaw is. We need to tell our media, are you building responsible, are you doing responsible objective journalism? Are you in it for America, for American values? Um, we have to ask our academics, we have to ask our educational institutions, educators, do you believe really in promoting peace and security and educating young people to understand that killing is not an American value, that it is 
where is your moral compass in education? I think educational institutions mm -hmm. right now are complicit mm -hmm. in promoting these un-American values that we see on campuses. The American Muslim Women's PAC empower women to run for office and contribute in positive uh, change. How you can do that? Well, one of them is coming and sitting here with you and sharing my point of view. I think it's very, very important, crucial for moderate, modern Muslims in America to stand up and speak out. You know, on um, after October 7th when I spoke, and I spoke at the March for Israel rally, I was bombarded with death threats and life threats, and I was alone at that time. Um, I was losing my friends and family. But I said, you know what, if I believe in, you know, American and, and uh, values that I'm here for the right reasons, I'm here for the betterment of my family, then I'm going to speak up mm. uh, because you know what? It's not popular to stand up against Hamas, mm -hmm. but I am going to do that because I have a moral duty to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's what AMWEC does. You know, we have taken on this leadership role. Today, I have four Muslim women working with me full time. You know, just six months ago, I lost my entire board. Oh you my know, God. women said, no, we are being ostracized at the mosque. They left me for, um, you know, for the fact that they were afraid to but speak But you out. are fighting, yeah. But we are fighting and, you know, alhamdulillah, I have four women who have left their families and they're working with me full time. Mm. And they're all across America. We are traveling, we're speaking at campuses and we're saying, like, we have a moral compass. We have a moral obligation to save our country, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to save also our religion from the extremists. Yeah, this is you encourage. Like, uh, finally, you yes. encourage the 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 dialogue between dialogue. Jewish and Muslims. So Absolutely. how how does is working? Is it working, or you have lots of obstacles? We've obviously, you know, this is a, a, a good things are difficult to achieve. They don't come easy. But I've seen a motivation of men, uh, male imams, who are calling me from different parts of America and saying, sister, we are with you. How do we help you? You know, just the other day I met an imam in Boston who said, I'm with you. This is not Islam. What we're seeing is not. And I'm going to speak up for Christians, Jews, and everybody else. We live with Hindus. We've lived with Hindus for 600 years. In, in, in India, and all of a sudden people are telling us only Muslims are going to go to heaven, nobody else is going to go to heaven, that is not Islam, mm -hmm. and we're fighting it, mm -hmm. and we're getting a lot of support. Mm -hmm. Alina, Anila, Ali, thank you so much, I'm so proud to have you on my show, thank you. I'm very sure that your thoughts are so important and people will like it. Thank you, thank you for having me.